Hi, I'm Saroja Coelho. I'm the host of Mornings on CBC Music. We are living in an unprecedented moment in all of our lives. And here at CBC Music, we wanted to try and bring everyone together in song. So we asked folks across the country for one song that had the musical magic to bring everyone together. And the one you voted for is Blue Rodeo's Lost Together. So everyone at home is going to warm up their vocal cords. You're going to submit your performance of Lost Together. The deadline is on Monday, April 27th at 5 p.m. Eastern time. And you can find all the information at cbc.ca slash music. I am joined now by Jim Cuddy from Blue Rodeo. Hi, Jim. Hello, Saraja. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks so much for being here with us. This is really exciting. I want to dive into the song itself. But before I do that, I have to ask you, how is self-isolation treating you? I think it's the same for everybody. It's it's uh, it's a kind of for me. It's a little bit of a beautiful monotony. I we have a little place that's north of Toronto, and I've been up here most of the time, and uh, it's lovely. I can go for walks in the woods, and uh, I play a lot of guitar. I'm writing a lot of songs, and the only problem is every day is exactly the same. Yeah, it, we we often lose track of of time a little bit, don't we? Oh, for sure, for sure. There's no delineation between the weekends and the weekdays. And I guess bad in my in in a macro way, my my work is all gone until whenever this ends. And I don't really get to see my family. I see my wife, she she comes up, but but that's about it. And uh I know, but I, I don't really I, I don't think I have it as bad as as a lot of people. So so I'm not complaining. What is the one thing you're looking forward to when you can get outside of quarantine when you're not locked in anymore? Well, I'd like to see my kids and their and their mates. I'd like to have a, you know, a party where I'm irritated by the fact that nobody cleans up their own dishes and where I'm they don't like the food enough and they're drinking too much of my wine. <laughs> I want all those things back. You know? But uh, I I just I think I'm really missing social engagement. That's what I I just missing the people I love. You know, and I look forward to that. What has been really amazing in these past few weeks is that musicians across Canada have just had this outpouring of art and, and moments of connection online. We've seen song a day uploads. We've seen people playing covers, people playing their own music. You've been doing that on your social media channels. Why do you think we're so drawn to music and musicians right now? Well, I think that music has this, I mean, art in general has this beauty, beautiful way of, of condensing and intensifying whatever the situation is or whatever being written about, but also removing you from it and, and giving you a little, a little relief. I mean, you can only watch so much news and hear so many radio reports about what's going on and what people know and what people don't know. And you need, you need to somehow fall back into your imagination a little bit and just get a little bit of relief, a little bit of timelessness. So, and I know that from the musician's perspective, it's a, it's a need, it's a habit. It's a, you know, to all of a sudden be cut off from being able to play is uh, is just too cold turkey for most people. So we all are putting songs on tape and putting them out there. I'm very glad that they're being well received, but it's uh, it is definitely scratching an itch. <laughs> <laughs> the the amazing thing is is it is exactly as you say that music provides this incredible comfort for people. Uh, at this moment, the engagement with music feels very intense right now. What music is bringing you comfort at the moment? Oh, I mean, I'm I'm up here with a great uh, vinyl collection, and I yesterday was my Steve Earle day. Uh, I have had Bill Evans, the the jazz pianist days. I I tend to just pick an artist and listen over and over and over again to the number of records I have. Those are the days that I have. To, my wife can't be here. It would drive her crazy <laughs> to just hear the same artist over and over again. And sometimes I'll flip a record back and forth because I'm so taken by it. But I, I've been, uh, I am not, I am not a big fan of quiet. I like noise. And so I would have music on all the time if, if I could. Um, so I've just been going through the record collection. I think yesterday, you know, yesterday was Steve Earle, but then I went for a walk and I listened to Raylan Baxter. Do you know Raylan Baxter? Mm -hmm. So I have three of his records. And so I listened to three of those and I always end up with little, you know, he says something in one of his songs about how he grew up just south of LA, but he was in a farming town. And I think, okay, I, I'm gonna figure out what that means. Like, where is there a farming town south of south of LA? And I, I know that it's around Muir, Muir Park. And so I, anyway, 
So it gives me something to do. <laughs> I want to turn to your music now. Lost Together is a song that people across the country have chosen as the one that they want to sing together as they all try to come together in their little isolated places across the across Canada. Uh, the winning song that was chosen was Blue Rodeo's Lost Together. I wonder how that feels for you. Oh, that's, that's a huge honor. I mean, uh, the idea that people would find, well, so many people across the country would choose it, but that they would find comfort in it. Um, I know that we know it's a significant song because when we've had opportunities to present ourselves because of a special moment, it's the one that we've chosen because it seems to be the one that envelops us all, that talks about the band, that talks about the audience, that talks about people that don't even have anything to do with music. So I, I see it as a significant song, but it's a great honor to have been chosen. I'd like to go back to the beginnings of this song. How was it written and what's it about? Well, first of all, Greg Keeler wrote it. So I, I'm gonna be representing him here, but I'm happy to represent him. So I know that he wrote it um, uh, sort of on the road. And uh, at the point that he wrote it, um, we were, I mean, we had done Casino, but we were still very much a rock band. We were, we would, there were obviously ballads, try and et cetera, but mostly we were a rock band. And I, we all, I remember Greg singing it as he was walking in the bus. We were touring in the States and, and he was singing it. And it seemed so out of character for Greg to be doing something that was, that was so romantic. And, uh, I remember, you know, and shamefully, I remember sort of making fun of him that about the song. And then when we started playing it, I realized how stupid that was and that, you know, I've been ashamed ever since. But uh, I think when we started to play it, we realized how anthemic it was, that how, how universal it was and how big the idea was. So that is just the... The, mind, the great mind of Greg Keeler. If we fast forward to right now, what's so interesting about the song is that it seems to have taken on a new meaning for people. Here we are in this unprecedented moment of isolation and constantly seeking connection with each other. Uh, do you feel like the context of, of our lives right now has changed the meaning of Lost Together? Well, I think it's certainly um, uh, distilled it into something that that's really, really understandable now. I think that what has been, you know, whatever has happened with this pandemic we've peeled away all the layers of our lives and, the, and everybody is open to everything that's happening to everybody else and we see all the we have all the same anxieties we have all the same fears we we have all the same empathy for people that are, have been affected by it and yet we see all the good things people are doing we see all the the email chains that people are trying to help each other out. I'm going to the store, do you need anything? We have people banging pots at seven o'clock at night to show their support for the frontline workers. And it's also moving. It's just also moving to, to realize that our, how much we need each other and how much we are willing to do for each other. And that's not something that's revealed to us very often. So if in a small way, Lost Together represents that, what we feel about each other, then that's that's beautiful. We are all going to try right across Canada to sing this song literally together from coast to coast to coast in these recorded performances. And what I think is so interesting about this moment of singing together is that it seems to be very comforting. So people aren't just looking to take music in, they actually want to join together as music makers. What is it about singing together that feels so good? <laughs> that's that's scientific. I'm not sure if I can answer that, but I, but I also I do think, and I've known all my life because my mother's a singer, my grandmother was a singer. I've always been completely smitten by singing, and I I realize that a single voice is as powerful as an orchestra. A single voice, and you know, we've all had this situation where somebody has just stood up and and they have sung a song, and you're just mesmerized. And they might not even be a great singer or a professional singer, but the power, the nakedness, the honesty of a human voice is so, is so powerful. Marry that with, with, with another voice, either singing in unison or singing in harmony. And I think you have just this, these beautiful ribbons of energy going, going among people. And uh, it's, 
it's very, everybody knows how, how strong it is. I mean, that's why people go to concerts. Half the time they're talking to each other, but they feel this, uh, these vibrations that go through them and are, and are extremely uplifting and extremely positive. What a beautiful image for how you feel at a concert, that there are ribbons of energy connecting everyone in the room. <laughs> I have felt that, but I've never had words for that before. The, there's a little stumbling block here, which is that Lost Together is not the easiest song to sing. So people are clearly moved by it, but there's some really low notes. I tried a, 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 I tried a version of it on my own. Um, even with the power of the shower, it, those low notes are really hard to hit. So do you, <laughs> <laughs> do you have any advice for folks who are gonna attempt this first musical moment with everyone else? Well, I guess the problem is that it is sung in a male tenor key. So you either have to sing as a, in a female range, you either have to sing really high or really low. And that's not easy. So it's going to be a lot easier for, for males to sing this or people with that range. There, there, are, there are females with that range too. But uh, I would honestly say that, that there's, there's, there's no real advice I can give. All you have to do, all you can do is relax and don't criticize yourself. You know, everybody knows that a singer's worst critic is their own ear. Just don't, just <laughs> sing. Because there's, you know, you don't need the power of the shower. You just need the power of clarity. Just throw that head back and sing. <laughs> I, uh, I also have a few questions from our audience. If, uh, if you have a couple of moments, I'd love to just ask you a few questions that people have sent in. Um, Mary Jo Lantain has said, Jim, who would be your ultimate recording artist to perform a duet with? Well, I think that, first of all, I'm a huge admirer of Steve Earle, but that's just hot off the press, right? That's after my Steve Earle day yesterday. I think that my favorite and most influential artist would be Jackson Brown. And um, I don't know whether we'd be a, a good duet, but I have always loved his music and his, his music and his voice have created so much warm feeling in me and, and been such an inspiration for me writing my own music. So probably Jackson Brown. Well, this next question relates exactly to that, the writing of your own music. This is a question from Jennifer Catherine, who says, Jim, what is your songwriting process? Lyrics, chord progression, or melody first? Well, chord progression and melody go together. So I would say those, are, those, that, those would be the two elements of a song I would finish first. But I would rarely finish a song without having some lyrical structure. So I would have either a chorus or a, a line. I mean, I know what I'm writing about, otherwise I don't think I could put the melody together. But what I, I mean, what I have right now is I have four songs that are, I know what they're, what's happening in them, but I haven't finished all the verses. So that's, that for me, that's the, that's the uh, nose to the grindstone work. That's the isolate myself, think the story through and keep, um, gathering details and writing the lyrics. So lyrics would finish last, but would be somehow uh, invented at the same time as the melody. This next question is from Colette McMillan, and it's also on the collaborative process and the songwriting process. She writes, uh, Jim, how do you and Greg decide who will sing lead on a new song? Do you take turns singing it and then decide who it suits best? Yeah, it's been a long time since Greg, Greg and I collaborated on the writing of songs. Uh, what, what we did when we started, so we started in Beds in 78, and when we, what we did in those days was we would write pieces and we were, I mean, in those days, I guess we were even living together, maybe even working together, but we would just play it for each other and we would bounce ideas off each other and then keep moving it forward. But, we, but the essence of the song had to be started and completed by one person. By the time we were sort of mid Blue Rodeo career, we would just write songs on our own and bring them to either the band or to each other and help with the editing, suggest things. Uh, obviously, I would help work on the, the, uh, um, the, the harmonies with Greg's songs. And uh, so we became collaborators in, in a way that we were separate songwriters, somehow merging our, our songs onto records. This next question comes from uh, Nishita Menon, who is asking about something that you touched on earlier, which is coming from a family of people who make music. Uh, she asks, 
as both your sons are now pursuing careers in music, what advice have you given them to stay relevant and have a successful 30 plus year career the way that you have? Well, first of all, that would be an unfair pressure. You know, you got to have a 30 year career. I think that it's not an easy life and you have to be prepared to do something to support yourself while you're gathering an audience. Uh, one of the things I really admire about my two sons it, it, doing their music is that they, first of all, they feel no sense of entitlement and they know it's hard work. I think when they were growing up, they thought music was easy because all they did was see me at concerts. They didn't see any of the work that went into it. Once they started touring with us, they realized how much work goes into it and how diligent you have to be about keeping your skills improving. And so I watched that in them. As for giving them advice, they're not, they're not asking me for advice. You know, they're not, they're not looking to me to say, what do I do now? What do I do now? I keep watching them. And if I really feel like I need to see, say something, I do. It's not always taken in. Sometimes they reject my advice, but I think that makes sense because I think that one of the things Blue Rodeo did to establish ourselves on the beginning, in the beginning of a 30 year career is to not listen to other people, is that we did what we thought was best. And sometimes it ran entirely contrary to what we were told. People would say, you can't do this. You can't play all the time on Queen Street. You can't do this. You can't do that. You can't put out a record that as crazy as Diamond Mine. And all those things worked in our favor because we just presented ourselves as artists and musicians. And that's what people liked. So part of me thinks I'm kind of relieved of the, I'm not mentors to my sons. Um, I'm collaborators with my sons and I'm an admirer of my sons. Jim, it has been so wonderful to hang out with you. Thank you for joining all of us in our moments of isolation and for the music right now. Uh, we're all going to set about recording our versions of Lost Together. Really great to hang out. Thank you. Thank you. I can't wait to hear everybody sing. This is going to be, it's going to be exciting. I'm so looking forward to seeing everybody's entry. If you are going to join us in this great big Coast to Coast to Coast sing-along, you can find all the information and send it to us at cbc.ca slash music.